आप सुन रहे हैं समाचार एजेंसी ऑफ इंडिया की साई न्यूज में ऑडियो बुलेटिन दिस इज द समाचार एजेंसी ऑफ इंडिया नाउ लिसन टू द नेशनल ऑडियो बुलेटिन ऑफ संडे जनवरी सेवेंथ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इन द न्यूज सीरीज ऑफ साई न्यूज The Maldives government on Sunday suspended 3 deputy ministers after their social media posts made derogatory remarks against Prime Minister Narendra Modi, local media Atal Times reported. In an earlier statement, the government had said it will not hesitate to take action against those who make such derogatory remarks. The three suspended ministers are Maryam Sharana, Malsha Sharif, and Maza Majid. In a statement, the government said that the government of Maldives is aware of derogatory remarks on social media platforms against foreign leaders and high-ranking individuals. These opinions are personal and do not represent the views of the government of Maldives. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitarman will present an interim budget for 2023 to 24 on February 1st. The full budget will be presented after the elections in July. Do not expect fireworks in the interim budget. Finance ministers have been known to slip minor concessions into them but mostly they have kept their ammunition dry reserving it for the full budget in July. An interim budget is supposed to be the most boring of budgets providing little more than a provisional statement of anticipated revenue and spending in 2023 to 24. It is not supposed to have tax changes that can influence voters. Yet promises can be made about the future if the party is re-elected. The general election is due in May and every little government promise will attract attention. The interim budget will be a major media event regardless of predictions of being boring. The 3-day All India Conference of Directors General and Inspectors General of Police 2023 will conclude in Jaipur today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah are participating in all important sessions of the conference. The National Security Advisor and senior officials are also taking part in the deliberations. A wide range of policing and internal security issues including cybercrime, counterterrorism challenges, left-wing extremism, and prison reforms are being be discussed during the event. Another key agenda of the conference is to deliberate on the road map for the implementation of the new criminal laws. This is the Samachar Agency of India. You are listening to the National Audio Bulletin of Sunday, January 7th, 2024 in the news series of Sai News. Union Home Minister and Minister of Cooperation Amit Shah will chair the National PACS Mega Conclave on the Primary Agricultural Credit Societies (PACS) as per then Mantri Bardia Jan Ashadi Kendra at Vijayan Bhawan in New Delhi tomorrow. The Mega Conclave is being organized by the Ministry of Cooperation in collaboration with the National Cooperative Development Corporation. Union Minister of Women and Child Development and Minority Affairs Smriti Zubani Rani has reached Saudi Arabia on a two-day visit. Minister of State for External Affairs and Parliamentary Affairs V Muraleedharan is accompanying her in the visit. Ms Irani is leading a delegation for the signing and exchange of the bilateral Hajj Agreement 2024 in Jeddah. This occasion will also feature a bilateral meeting between Minister Irani and the Minister of Hajj and Umrah Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Dr Taufik bin Fazan Al Rabia. Discussions will cover issues of mutual interests, focusing on issues related to Hajj this year. The delegation will also engage with the Indian business community and the Indian diaspora in Saudi Arabia, fostering stronger ties. Ms. Irani is slated to attend the opening ceremony of the third edition of the Hajj and Umrah Conference in Jeddah tomorrow. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh will leave on a two-day visit to London tomorrow. He will be accompanied by a high-level Ministry of Defence delegation, comprising senior officials from DRDO, Service Headquarters, Department of Defence, and Department of Defence Production. During his visit, Mr. Singh will hold a bilateral meeting with his UK counterpart Secretary of State for Defence Grant Shapps. The Defence Ministry said they are expected to discuss a wide range of defence, security, and industrial cooperation issues. In a first, an Indian Air Force C-130J aircraft recently carried out a night landing at the Kargil airstrip. The Indian Air Force said, employing terrain masking en route, the exercise also dovetailed a training mission of the Garud Commandos. Union Minister for Commerce and Industry Piyush Goyal said that the nation is moving towards two important fundamentals which is women-led development and making India corruption-free. He was delivering the inaugural address at the Global Investors Meet at Chennai in Tamil Nadu today. The minister said that the country has witnessed a 7.7 growth and inflation has been brought down considerably. He added that under the dynamic leadership of Prime Minister Modi in the last 10 years a fragile economy has climbed to the fifth place globally with a strong economy. The minister appreciated the state's achievement for having 43% of women workforce. He said that this was a direction that over the next 30 years India will become a developed country with 30 trillion dollar economy. 
This is the Samachar Agency of India. You are listening to the National Audio Bulletin of Sunday, January 7, 2024 in the news series of Sai News. The BJP today announced the name of Dorji Chering Lepsha as the party candidate for the biennial Rajya Sava election from Sikkim. The election will be held on the 19th of this month. Sitting Rajya Sava member from Sikkim Hishela Champa is completing his term next month. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation, DGCA, has directed domestic airlines to immediately carry out inspection of emergency exits of all Boeing 737-8 MAX aircraft currently operating as part of their fleet. The directive of the aviation regulator comes in the wake of the Alaska Airlines incident involving Boeing 737-9 MAX aircraft. On Friday, the Alaska Airlines plane's outer section, including a window, fell off mid-air leading to emergency landing at Portland in U.S. Currently, Air India Express, SpiceJet, and Akasa Air have Boeing 737-8 MAX planes in their fleets. U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has ordered immediate inspections of certain Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes before they can return to flight. The Emergency Airworthiness Directive will affect approximately 171 aeroplanes worldwide. Polling is underway in Bangladesh to elect members of national parliament amid boycott and fear of violence. By and large voting is peaceful. The National Parliament of Bangladesh called Jadio Sangshad has 350 members of which 300 members are directly elected through voting. They serve for a five-year term in single-seat constituencies. The remaining 50 memberships are reserved for the women who are nominated by the government. In the Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir, PJK, the uproar continued at several places across the region against the removal of subsidies and a surge in wheat prices. The protest entered its 11th day and the cities in the region are showing clear signs of people's increasing discontent. The protesters are displaying their firm determination towards taking the struggle ahead unless the government rolled back the price hike. Reportedly, there is an increase in the number of sit-in protesters daily. Cities in the region like Skardu, Ganche, and Shirgar are witnessing growing public unrest. In Afghanistan, two people were killed and 14 injured in a blast in Kabul yesterday. Kabul police said the explosion occurred in a bus in Dash Tibarchi neighborhood, an enclave of Shia community. The incident was being probed by the police. Last year in November, seven people were killed in a blast on a bus in Dash Tibarchi, that blast was claimed by ISIS. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, has said that it has completed the dismantling of Hamas command structure in the northern Gaza Strip. Army spokesman Daniel Hagari told reporters that Palestinian militants are now operating in the area only sporadically and without commanders. He said Israel had killed around 8,000 militants in North Gaza. The Israeli army is now focused on dismantling Hamas in South and Central Gaza. You were listening to the news series of Sai News of the Samachar Agency of India in the National Audio Bulletin of Sunday, January 7, 2024. On Monday, January 8, 2024, we will once again appear with an audio bulletin. Also, do not forget to watch Limti Kalantern on burning topics in Sai News at 7 a.m. daily. If you like these audio bulletins, then you must like, share and subscribe to them. Now we take your permission, Jai Hind.